WWE backs uh, Vince McMahon in their uh, their quest to compel arbitration. Um, so WWE people f- keep forgetting that WWE is a part of this lawsuit. They want to say this is a Vince McMahon lawsuit, but WWE is very much in this lawsuit. And um, WWE joined up with John Laurinaitis and Vince, and they have um, they made a motion to compel arbitration against uh, Janelle Grant. So basically, because of the NDA that Janelle Grant signed, the Vince McMahon signed. Um, they're using that, even though Vince McMahon didn't pay, <laughs> he stopped paying, and that's why we're here. Um, they want to compel arbitration to keep this out of the courts. They uh, they're they're trying everything that they can. So all three of them have joined together. We talked about this possibility a couple weeks ago. It has now happened. They they had a lengthy filing. Uh, I was able to check out a little bit of it. I actually just tried to pull it up on the Observer website, but I just could not find it. It was it was on their main page, but I don't know what happened to it. But uh, yeah, they're going to compel arbitration. So WWE and uh, Vin- or Vince McMahon and John Laurinaitis all on the same side in this lawsuit. Well, of course they are. I mean, like they don't want this to go to trial. They don't want the last thing they want is discovery, right? That's why they settle with MLW. They don't want anyone going through their stuff, and that's why Vince McMahon's trying to you know he say what you want about him. He he's always been pretty good at playing. Um, the, the, the court of public opinion like yeah um his whole thing this this last week with uh oh you know do you know was it this week actually oh she sent all these explicit text messages and da, 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 da. Well, well do you have them well no i deleted them <laughs> but like that's the thing is like all you've got to do is just release that that happened and like you try to shape public opinion and it's a civil trial it's not a criminal trial so you can kind of do those things so i mean like they're just trying to force they're just trying to force them to settle right and realistically this is a civil trial man these things usually settle before going to court yeah. you know um i would be i said this from the jump i would be surprised if this actually goes to court she'll get a very healthy settlement right um they don't nobody no none of them i would love i would love to see this go to court personally i just don't think that's going to happen yeah I don't think it is. Uh, I was able to find it. Now, this is a quote from WWE. It says, WWE disputes Grant's allegations, but as a threshold matter, this dispute cannot be heard in court because Grant agreed to arbitrate her claims. WWE, therefore, moves to compel this action to arbitration, WWE said in the filing. If the case moves to arbitration, that would mean that the case would move to private mediation and out of public court. So that's what they're looking for. They don't mm-hmm. want this to go to public court. They don't want this to go in front of a jury or nothing like that because the burden of proof is much lower that way. They just want to get this thing over with. All yep. three defendants in the lawsuit, WWE McMahon and John Laurinaitis, support taking the suit in this direction. Simply put, Grant has no claims actionable in this court because the separation and non-disclosure agreement she signed with McMahon and WWE uh, the monetary benefits of which she conceitedly accepted and retained uh, contains an arbitration provision that unambiguously precludes this court from adjudicating her claims, WWE further said. So with that said, Vince McMahon stopped paying. So the NDA, it doesn't appear that the NDA would even be held up in this case. No, now, that's I, the whole thing. But that's yeah. the whole thing. They're going to claim that because she added the addendum that it has to be arbitrated, we have to go to arbitration, even though Vince stopped paying. Right. That's that's their entire argument. Dave seemed impressed with that argument. Um, now it's going to go and again. It's going to go to arbitration. It's all a matter of how much. Right. Again, I would love to see this go to court. Not going to court. They're going to arbitrate. Yeah, no, it's I think it's a, it's eventually going to go into arbitration. I think it behooves the Janelle you know, Grant side to to hold out as long as possible. Because the longer they hold out, probably the dollar figure is going to go out, go up. Unless, of course, WWE and Vince and Laurinaitis are able to provide some type of damning evidence that, that corroborates Vince's claims that this was all consensual the whole time. But as of right now, as you mentioned earlier, you know, I guess the dog ate Vince's texts. You know, he said he deleted them yeah. um, once once the relationship was broken off, and so. But they did say that they think that it'll all come out in discovery should they go to trial. But they're not trying to get to discovery. So well, that, it's kind of a veiled threat at that point. Well, it's a stupid threat because he, Vince might have deleted his text, but it takes two to send a text message. You think Janelle Grant's deleted those texts from Vince McMahon? No. That's the thing. So again, but it's all court of public opinion. Like he's just trying to he, – he, he, he's very good at this. He's very good at massaging – idiots for the lack of yeah. a better term like and there's a bunch of people on there right now going yeah look at her you know a bunch of roman reigns avatars and stuff like that a bunch of guys who want cheese sports so i mean i don't know man i think this thing's i don't know if done is the word but i mean very very soon we're going to stop hearing about it yeah 
Yeah, I, I think I think it's only a matter of time before uh, this whole thing gets settled. But um, look, we're going to keep talking about it until that point happens. So as each new story comes up, and for the most part, I'm going to try to make it our top story because I do think this is the most important story in all of wrestling, regardless Great. of what else is happening. Um, so I'm going to try to make it the top story as often as possible. Um, our second top story, and boy, did I try to get the inside scoop on this, J.D., or what? I really yes. tried no. to get the inside scoop on this on this Noah story, and man, I got the big uh, not not exactly a stiff arm, but uh, our homeboy is kayfabing us a little bit. Our friend <laughs> did not answer our questions for this. I'm sure this kind of blindsided him too, quite frankly. Yeah. So I was super bummed that we didn't get any scoop skis on this one, but you know, it is what it is. Yeah. So Noah wants a a WWE partnership. Actually, Cyberfight, the new president of Cyberfight. Um, stated at the press conference, Yusaki Okamoto, who was appointed as the new president of Cyberfight on Wednesday, so that's the parent company of NOAA, said one of Cyberfight's targets was to strengthen their relationship with WWE. Um, said Cyber Agent, the parent company of Cyberfight, also owns a BEMA and a streaming service that is the new home for the WWE content in Japan, including Raw, Smack, SmackDown, and premium live events. WWE and uh, Pro Wrestling Noah have worked together in the past. Nakamura took part in the Noah in a Noah event back in 2023, where he wrestled the Great Muda in one of Muda's final matches before retiring. Uh, Kenta also made some appearances while he was working for WWE. Uh, Wednesday's press conference saw Keiji Muto being appointed as an official scouting advisor for Pro Wrestling Noah, and it was announced that Oka Sasaki and Ita would be officially joining uh, Pro Wrestling Noah. But um, Noah making the big push to be a, uh, a partner with WWE, man. What do you think? It's interesting. Um, disheartening in a little bit in a way, uh, mainly because any part, any company that's partnered with WWE winds up not surviving. So my brain always goes there. Like WWE was doing stuff with all Japan at the beginning of the year and all Japan fans really rejected that. Right. They brought in Charlie Dempsey to challenge for the title. And, uh, the no, the uh, the all Japan fans kind of shit on it. I can't help now. Here's the thing: Japanese wrestling fans like Japanese wrestling. I'm talking about native native fans, right? Not not people from not people from the states who are pearl fans or whatever. I wonder how their fan base is going to react to this. I mean, Noah's been really good this year. You talk about I haven't been watching, and I heard Joe and Rich praise the last Great Voyage show. And I was like, man, I gotta go back and catch this. They're they're saying these good things, like because Noah for the last, I used to be a huge Noah fan. The last year really kind of turned me off to the company a little bit. I just wasn't connecting with anything. So I was curious. I don't know, man. I don't know how this is gonna react. I don't know if Cyber Fight really just wants to be NXT Japan. And where does DDT fit in all this? Because DDT's got that relationship with AEW, and it's a very <clears throat> different kind of company. Yeah. You know, um, it's. It's interesting to me. It's interesting. It is kind of it's kind of scary because we know WWE's history with mm -hmm. working with other companies. Look at the UK scene. There, there's a lot of people at fault for that, but I think WWE is probably the the biggest one for killing that scene. Um, you know, and Re Regal kind of sold out all those companies over there, and they they poached all the talent, and uh, they ended up putting some of them on the WWE network, and nobody ever watched any of this stuff. And next thing you know, pandemic hits, and those companies are all out of business. Um, WWE has been looking for their foothold in Japan for a long time. They were, I think, they were at one point trying to buy Noah. I think didn't they try to buy all Japan at one point too? Yeah, or they did try to both, buy both, yeah. Yeah, and uh, of course the Japanese companies are they're very patriotic. They don't they don't sell to outsiders. Um, so it's kind of uh, I th I think it's kind of cool that they do that. So because uh, they don't want anybody kind of getting their their grips into their into their companies from overseas. So, um, yeah, but you know it's you know it, it's it's really hard to say. WWE's history under the Vince era, you would think oh they're gonna kill it, but the guys that are there now we're a part of that, right? Like, like triple H was a part of the killing of the UK scene. You know, so was regal, you know, Nick Khan probably made some of those deals happen. You know, they, they, they essentially killed evolve, right? They, they, they killed evolve. Um, ECW worked with WWE and next thing you know, they're out of business. And then you go back all the way to the territory days where Vince was getting tapes from all these territories. And one by one, he started poaching the talent and killing the, killing them off and taking their TVs. So, um, the hist like I have historical precedence that says this is pro this probably would not go well should they do it. But um, you know, Abema is a big company, 
Cyberfight's a big company, right? So it's not like it's not like they're like a subservient brand like Cyberfight. I know WWE is huge too, but Cyberfight's no joke. They got a they got a lot of money over there, which you could tell by a lot of the production, the money they spend on their shows. So um Russell Universe is a great app. It is a great website. They got a lot of great action on there. Um, I wish they would bring over some of their MMA stuff and kind of make it like a super combat sports app, but I really like it. It's and visually, I think Noah, as far as production wise, is you know right there at the top. You know, they don't they don't have as many bells and whistles as WWE, but their camera work and everything they do with it, I think, is very good, top notch stuff. They got a lot of great talent. Um, their talent's a bit on the older side, but you know they still got you know Kaito Kiyomiya and some of those cats over there. Uh, uh, Inamura, who remains one of my favorites, I wish they'd wish they'd finally get behind that guy. But they got they got a lot of great talent over there. Uh, what I don't want is to see Kaito Kiyomiya over in NXT, you know, learning how to look at the hard cam, right, and doing squats and you know taking bumps and stuff like that. I I, I don't want them to kind of ruin him because I think it's finally we finally got him. To mm-hmm. where I think Noah needs him to be because they've given him so many shots and he just never was able to to kind of get through that you know and become that top guy that they were looking for. But I think they might have finally gotten him. You know what I mean? And so for him to go do NXT stuff, I think that would just ruin the whole thing. No, I, I agree. Um, I wonder if WWE is was, are they having are these talks with WWE pre existing? Or do they just come out there and say we want to strengthen our relationship with WWE? Because that's exactly what All Japan did at the beginning of the year. Yeah, they just came out and said, "Hey, we want to work with WWE." Blah blah blah. The fans shit on it. I'm very curious because again, Noah fans are older fans that that are typically fans of like a little bit more MMA, a little bit more uh, um, fans of like the the the, the Royal Road stuff, right? The Arc style stuff, the the Misawa era, like the the, the it's older, right? So if WWE was as popular in Japan as they want us to think they are, they would tour there all the time. The truth of the matter is, is like the WWE fans from Japan are just fans of US pop culture. Those yes. exist. But I mean, like, they don't, you know, they don't draw great. And here's the thing. Here's the, here's the reason why they want this, right? Here's the, the key to this. Japanese wrestling is in a bad place right now. This is why they're all working together because nobody's drawing. They have not recovered. None of them, none of the companies have recovered from the pandemic. And this reeks to me of Noah trying to protect cyber fight specifically, trying to protect itself, trying to latch on to the only company right now that is being successful at the box office. Aside from CMLL, like AEW's eh, new Japan, eh, you know, nobody's drawing a lot. So they're trying to latch on and historically speaking, that doesn't work well. WWE tends to strip mine what they want and leave the bones. Oh, I don't know. You say you have historical precedents on your side. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I, I don't know how I feel about it. Um, you know, Noah is no stranger to having a partnership with an American promotion. They worked at TNA for years. You know, so it's not it's not that crazy. The, the crazy thing is is having a partnership with WWE because those partnerships typically don't end well. So we'll, we'll continue to 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 check it out and see what's going to happen with that. Uh, I am uh, I am not very optimistic, um, but if it's just like you know, er, occasionally you know somebody from Noah works a takeover show or whatever NXT is calling their shows now, or if it's you know sending Charlie Dempsey over for a big show and you know stuff like that, like NXT working, you know. It might be able to be fine, but I always feel like there's an ulterior motive here. I mean, what do you think? You think they're going to send Ironhead Fujita over to work a takeover? I mean, uh, maybe. Oh, oh man. Well, I think somebody. What was the joke? Oh, we can get uh, Ironhead Fujita versus Goldberg in a stare down match. I cannot remember who said that joke, but it was so great. <laughs> it was so great. You know what they really should do? You know what they really should do is they should get Nakajima back. And send yes. him over to an NXT show and let him just kick the shit out of those out of those performance center kids and like just let him be a dickhead on NXT television. I would be thoroughly entertained. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think I think that would be great. 